I managed to check into the hotel a little bit early. We're staying at the Candles. Um, I was originally on the third floor, and, but the lift is out, and Ali was supposed to be on the first floor. But Al took the hit for me and took the third floor room, and so I'm on the first floor. We arrived at Petra a little bit early, and so he found out with an extra five JD, ten dollars, I can go to Petra twice. So uh, I'll head down. It's probably uh, two thirty in the afternoon. Got some water in my backpack. Pick up some chips and chocolate on the way down at the supermarket because Candles is uh, at the top of Tourist Street. And uh, let's see where we go from here. So this is outside the Candles Hotel, which is up on a tippy tippy hill. Down there in the distance, you might be able to see a Moven Peck sign. And just behind the Moven Peck sign is a square building. That is the Petra Visitor Centre. That's where I'm aiming for first. I'm off to Petra. At short notice, <laughs> I've got my supplies. Hopefully that'll get me at least down to the treasury. <laughs> I don't know how far I'll get today, whether I'll get down to the Royal Tombs. But we shall see. Walking down to Petra on uh, Tourist Street. And there's my mama's recipe. And there's Edom Hotel. So let's just see how far I get today. So here I am standing outside of the Petra um, Business Centre. What you've got across the street is the Moven Peck. So if you actually do want an ATM, Moven Peck is the only place that has an ATM. Uh, taxis here are a set price. So it's about 5 or 7 JD to get out to Little Petra, for example. And if you're orientated that this is the main gate, the bus stop and the bus uh, is down that far side. So uh, that gives you the basic orientation to the front. And then when we get in, we'll see the, um, the museum and the, and the shops. Okay. Fortified myself. <laughs> Let's see what the next couple of hours has to bring. So once you actually come in through security, which they just scanned the bag and didn't even look at me. So this is the forecourt. So you've got the shops down to the back here, the museum over here to the side. Usually there's a fountain running in the middle there. It's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, the facilities are just there, just right by the gate. And Muath's shop is just this first one just here. So we'll just cruise over and see what's happening if anybody's face recognizes anything hi brothers how are you okay so i've left muath at the shop with his brother i'll just do the gauntlet of the little people yelling out to want to buy things show my jordan pass and uh, head down So it's uh, 2.30, they've just scanned my Jordan Pass and I'm about to head down. So one of the first uh, sites that you come to is the obelisk tomb and it's the obelisk tomb because at the top there's obelisks so that's a fairly self-explanatory one. So this is just at the top of the hill we've still got a couple of kilometres to go. So I've just arrived um, at the mouth of the sea and uh, I think um, Wadi El Hoslam, something like that, it's a dam and uh, I'm going to head into the Sukh into the sick, S-I-Q, sick. Poor defenseless animals. Okay, into the sick I go. This first section is a bit steep. That is a little friend for you Janet. 
and you can see the first carving there before we even get into the sick. Okay, so it's a lot cooler the minute that you just arrive into this covered area. to remember when you're walking in the sick or walking anywhere in Petra or anywhere in Jordan for example don't forget to look up it is just amazing but you have to look down as well because you don't want to trip or fall so it's really important to watch where your feet are going and uh, enjoy look up and look down don't miss a thing the surface as you uh, walk along varies greatly to uh, loose uh, sand with uh, large pebbles and now this um, really uh, concreted in large rocks. So uh, your gait or your speed and your, <laughs> it varies continually. And there is a camel hump up there. Yeah. And the neck and the head also. There is a big one shipper here. He's wearing a camel. Yeah. And he holds a stick in his hand. How many camel you can see here? One, two, three, maybe four. Caravan at least three camels. And there is three. There is also another camel at the caravan. So you can see those humps just there and the rock. That is a camel caravan coming this way. And if you're looking this way, this is the camels heading the other direction. So you've got four camels and the Bedouin with his staff just here. And up here you can see the tops of the camels. So everywhere you turn, there is something very, very different. And there are those camels facing the other direction. It's really important when you're walking through just to try and stay a little bit vigilant because just here in the side you can actually see tiles that have been uh, linked together and it forms a bit of a viaduct and it runs along the whole course here. So it's how they uh, channeled water. And if we look over to the other side, we can see another groove. And this other groove wasn't, uh, didn't seem to have the tiles in it. That one just looks to be a natural formation. Fantastic. Honestly, I've barely moved from where I saw those uh, tiles that were like an aqueduct. Come a couple of meters here and you've got some stairs leading up to a shrine. You just, every step of the way has something just absolutely fascinating. You can see
see this water course just continuing right the way down on both sides. A little further up there there's some uh, stairs carved out of the rock so there's those stairs I've just come up to them but I noticed just as I came through past that corner a little niche up there in the rock just amazing So we came off that um, really hard rocks just before and then we hit some soft sand and uh, that's kind of a little indicator that you're about to hit something pretty spectacular. And uh, just peeking through the rocks there, you can just see the treasury. So let's just scooch a little closer. tripping over a rock. <laughs> wow. Actually this looks to be a really good time to arrive about three o'clock after three because there's not many people here at all. We've just arrived at the treasury. It's called the treasury because the urn up the top there they thought was uh, they thought it wasn't solid. They thought it that held treasure, so they used to fire um, at it to try and break it to release the treasure within. So I've arrived in here to the treasury, and the first thing I got to do was teach some ladies how to do a reverse selfie. So that they got that gorgeous camel in the uh, <coughs> with the background there of the treasury. So uh, what a very handsome camel he is, and uh, we've uh, got him in the nice photos. So it's really cool here at the treasury. So I might just head a little further down. Might go back to the urn tomb. We'll just wait and see. So when you arrive down at the treasury, you've got um, this little sook just here and uh, some drinks and there's a really grotty toilet uh, back there. There's the treasury. Then this way leads you to the, the uh, amphitheater and everything else is down this way. And there's the entrance to the sick on for the way out. So this is the first place that I got to that very first time and uh, feeling really quite comfortable now so I'll head a little further down into the uh, antiquity. So all the way through the antiquity there are stall holders and vendors all selling the same products. So uh, if you uh, can just bargain the prices down if you want. This one says that it is tomb 67, 200 BC to 200 AD. This tomb is a remarkable, is remarkable for its upper doorway. Let's have a look at that. Upper doorway decorated with Hellenistic pediment, 
Uh, some call it the thief tomb, according to the story told by local Bedouins that a chief took refuge in this cave for a period of time. A water channel of the Roman uh, Byzantine period closed to the lower entrance of the tomb in 1998. Excavations discovered sections of the channel where across the door were found to be partially removed, possibly by tomb raiders due or due to a flash flood. The excavations also revealed 20 pyramidical fernery stele outside the tomb. No idea what that means. Pyramids, poo, fernery, f funery, f u n e r a r y. I'll have to look that one up. Stele, s t e l a e, nefresh outside the tomb. Hmm. No idea what that is. Looking around here, we can find another gorgeous tomb. This is called the Streets of Facades, 50 BC to 50 AD. Because there are the facades. Pretty impressive. So I've walked a little further in and down there is the Nabataean Theatre. And over here looks to be some tombs. I'll just uh, try and find out which ones they are by doing Google Map. So when you come up close here you can see that it's actually blocked off. So this is called Tomb 825, 1st uh, century AD and those are funerary staleys, staleys, S-T-E-L-A-I, um, are kind of like um, like chessboard pieces, uh, little triangle things. So this is a family tomb that contains 17 shafts. Each shaft comprised of two levels. Um, in it separating a slab inserted, another person could be buried on top. Um, these funeral staleys may indicated that it was an Abbotian. Um, you spot some obelisk shapes in the rock, obelisk shapes in the rock, where, where, where? I'm looking for the obelisk shapes, I can see no obelisk shapes. The facade is interesting because it shows how resourceful the Nabateans were in their construction. Notice the columns carved out of the rock on the right side of the pediment above the door, yes. This style is typically Nabataean. The facade is topped by a half Assyrian crow step and an Egyptian cavitoe. Mm. Interesting. The left side of the facade, there's a groove in place of a column and part of a pediment. It seems that the rock on this side was weaker and instead of carving it, they inserted the stones into the grooves. There we go up there, that almost uh, wing shaped, wing shaped, there we go, just beautiful. I've walked past this several times now and I've never noticed it, uh, oops. So I just continue to walk slowly down, I'm not really pushing myself today actually, it's really really cool so making it really pleasant. So uh, there's all the tombs carved into the rock. There's the Nabataean Theatre, so I'll get down there in a second. I just spotted that one up there, I don't know what that one is, I'll uh, have to uh, check that one on Google Map. Looks pretty impressive. Oh, it's just amazing, look how smooth that is. Wonderful. I've unfortunately spent a little bit of time looking down so because I'm in the soft sand and then I've stopped here just before we get to the Nabataean Theatre and uh, just look up at these tombs here in the rock. Just beautiful.
walking up to the Nabataean Theatre. You see how grand it is. The stairs carved into the rock. Um, I can imagine that a fence means that you don't go in it, but uh, clearly that doesn't apply to all the uh, visitors. Thank you, appreciate that. Thank you. So it's coming up for four o'clock. I came in at 2.30. Um, I passed the uh, amphitheatre. More tombs there. I'm about to get to the urn tomb and uh, what I might do is just uh, turn it around for today and uh, once I get up to the urn tomb I, I'll just, I won't go up the stairs. Um, you can see the urn tomb just there. Yeah. And the reason it's called the urn tomb is because there was an urn found in there. It's uh, a uh, pretty self-explanatory the way they name these things. And uh, around the corner further is uh, where I actually want to go tomorrow, around those ones there, the royal, um, the royal tombs. There's four over there. So uh, I'll aim to uh, get to them tomorrow. So that is the urn tomb. And that's one of the ones I went to last time. And there's lots of stairs there. Lots and lots of stairs there. Absolutely beautiful. And if we pan around to this side of the hill, they're the ones I'm going to aim to get to tomorrow. So I'll start earlier in the day and I will where am I going to follow? I'm going to follow that path where that donkey's coming down. And I'm going to somehow head up there. But yeah, I just started that a little bit later in the day, so it's not really an option. I've gone too much further. We're just uh, standing here and looking and you can just, everywhere you look just by standing and concentrating a little more on uh, different sections, you can see tombs carved in the rock. Literally, I've been here three or four times, three times before, four times before, that I just have never seen before. Just by standing still, you see some amazing things. Okay, so this is me for the end of the day. I'll turn around here, and this is the end tomb, and I'll uh, cruise back up to uh, the treasury, back up the sick and uh, see what the night holds for me. My day would not be complete if I didn't actually have a little comment about toilets. So uh, when you come down um, the, in, entering the sick, there's some um, dem demountable toilets. Um, when you get down to the Nabataean Theatre, there's some uh, toilets into the cave. And uh, these ones here are actually quite impressive. She didn't attempt to get any money off me. Where the one um, up at the monastery, when you're really, really desperate after walking for a few hours, is just a cesspool of whatever, and then she's demanding one JD per person. So uh, there are rest stops uh, all along the way, every couple of kilometres, basically which is really quite good, <laughs> but those ones are really good. Uh, once again, don't stretch your paper into the toilet, put it into the basket beside, because the system just doesn't 
does not tolerate it at all. Okay, back in the treasury and gonna head up the sick and uh, head back. It has been so cool. I think coming late in the day is a good plan, but you just can't get right to the end in uh, one day if you start a little bit late. So uh, see what happens tomorrow. And I start a bit earlier. I have always been told that you couldn't get a ride down here, but clearly the Indian community can. I'm walking back, I'm probably halfway through the sick at the moment. Just absolutely perfect. Very quiet, not many people here. I noticed this stone just here. <laughs> Everybody's a bit quiet coming back. <laughs> So it's actually coming for five o'clock and it's getting quite, getting quite dark. There's uh, not many people here and it's really nice and cool. A lot of empty carriages going up. I'm actually feeling quite remarkably okay. I'm not breathless. Um, I've been walking very slowly, very, very slowly. And uh, the physical temperature has been absolutely beautiful. So that's been one advantage. We're coming later in the day, but you just don't get an opportunity to go um, probably further than the Navatian Theatre. And yeah, I wouldn't have been able to get up to the M tomb and back. There's just too many steps. So uh, if you're going to come <laughs> at 2.30, don't have big expectations. <laughs> So it opens at 6.30 in the morning, so I'll just see how I feel and I'll just uh, get up and wander down. How's this going to have a lay day? So just... <laughs> I'm just... <sighs> just spectacular. <laughs> the colours are changing as the... Uh, day goes on.